Hello and welcome to another episode of Death by Bungie. Remember this room? This is the old studio. My wife and I and Genevieve are all getting ready to move out of this old house and into our new home with the new studio, the trophy room. And I can't wait to keep those videos coming, to keep Death by Bungie coming your way from that new studio. It's almost all set up. And once we get everything moved up there, we'll be in there full time making those videos. Right now, those of you following Death by Bungie know that I just returned from Maine and New Hampshire where I was hunting black bears this year. Fortunate enough to go up there and spend some time up there. Unfortunate enough that I did not see any black bears within range to get a shot at. Saw plenty of dead ones. I mean, people were successful. It just wasn't in the cards this year for me and Bungie. Bungie. However, scent control played a big role in this hunt. I've got to tell you, I had bears within range making noises. I am confident that I had bears nearby coming into the bait, just not presenting shots. That's just how it was. They smelled me. No doubt about that. A black bear can smell as good or better than a deer. So sun control is very important. Because of that, I'm very grateful to a friend of Bungie, Eric Barnes, who's joining us this week on Death by Bungie, to share with you his tips about scent control. Now, Eric Barnes, Dual Threat Outdoors, had joined me previously for an episode of Talking with Bungie or two, talking about hunting those big bucks on state game lands. He and I have done some podcasts together. We've communicated back and forth. He's a fellow Pennsylvanian, and although I've never met him in person, I really am grateful for the conversations that we've had and the great information he's been willing to share with you and me. The fact that I just came back from my hunting trip there, I haven't had a chance to really unpack all my gear, much less package up the bear hunting video that I hope to share with you because there's still some interesting stuff in that video coming your way. I'm very grateful to Eric Barnes for getting together and giving me all this footage going through his scent-free regimen and sharing that with me. Now, it's not exactly the same regimen that I have, but I think you'll get something out of this video. What's going on, friends of Budgie? This is uh, Eric Barnes here uh, of Dual Threat Outdoors. I'm glad to be a part of the Bungie community. Um, Rich wanted me to go ahead and take some time to do a video here on scent control. I'm a huge proponent of being scent free in the woods like Rich is. Um, it's been a very important part to my success, um, especially the last two or three seasons, you know, with archery equipment, whether it's compound crossbow recurve, you know, it's an intimate game. You want to be close with, with you want to be in close proximity with the deer. So I'm going to show you some of the steps that I take here to be scent free from home to field. So check it out. Okay, guys. So uh, here in my bathroom, uh, not anything super exciting. Just wanted to explain some things I do. Um, so about a month before season, um, I typically go from this or whatever normal everyday shampoo, soap, whatever you, you use. Um, I go from that to something of this variety. The reason I do it a month before season is because, you know, if you wash, you know, with scent free soap or shampoo, whatever, the day before your hunt, that's great. That's definitely better than washing with something like this, but there's still going to be some scent in the in your skin pores. If you whereas if you do it a month before season, there might be a minuscule amount or something. I mean, it's going to be hard to get 100% scent free, but it's going to be like 98, 99% compared to like 40, 50, 60% um, because one washing doesn't get you could fully cleanse your pores of whatever odors you have may or may not have. Um, so. You know, now now knowing that, focusing on this area here, um, you know, I'm a brand ambassador for Scentlock, so I get a lot of their stuff. So this is just their shampoo and their body wash. But I've used the Scent Killer Gold over the years, as well as the um, Hunter Specialties uh, sent away. I, I know Rich has featured that in an old video. Um, honestly, when it comes to soap, as long as you're using one, that is way better than nothing compared to one brand being over better than the other for that. They all pretty much do the same thing. Um, I haven't really noticed a difference in results with any of the soaps. But, yeah, if you get any of them soaps, you know, start you know start going a month. Maybe, you know, I wouldn't go any less than two weeks personally before season just to get your pores as clean as possible. Because it's not like you're putting, like, you know, dough urine or, um, um, 
some of the uh, the uh, cover scent scents like uh, earth on your body. So it's nothing that's going to smell the ordinary when you're going to work or going with the family or whatever. So just just scent free. You're just not going to smell like anything. Um, so do that, and then obviously, before, especially before you wash um, during season, that's key. Also, um, I think toothpaste is important too. Now this I don't do until like before season because of, you know, mouth odors constantly changing. There's not really the pores like there's with skin, but basically throughout season I've gone with this Dead Down Wind toothpaste. I mean, it's it's pretty much no flavor. It's pretty much the same thing as if you're brushing with baking soda, but it's a lot nicer than baking soda in my opinion. Um, and the only reason I have Dead Down Wind for this is because, to my knowledge, they are the only company that actually makes a um, scent-free toothpaste. Um, if there's another one, you know, go for it, but I've, I've done fine with this, and it's pretty inexpensive as well. Um, so, and what I do dorm normally is I have an electric toothbrush. Um, I just switch out the head right before season um, and just use that um, to control mouth odors, um, or to not really control, to minimize them, because you're still going to have some of that. But, uh, and I use that all throughout season as well, so... Yeah, that's, that's basically what I do in the bathroom. And another thing, too, with the showering, before season, I still use, will use just a regular towel that was washed, however. You know, so that's still getting some extra sun on me. But, but within that week of season and during season, I have dedicated towels. They're just kind of older. Separate. These are just our normal bath towels. You know, I have other towels that are separate that I use for hunting and that are washed in scent-free detergent, which I'm going to get to the laundry room here soon. Scent-free deodorant is important. You know, I'm Old Spice is typically my go-to brand for the year, but in September, I also make that switch to scent-free deodorant um, with the scent-free shampoo and, and uh, shower soap as well. All right, guys, as you can see for this portion of the video, I'm in my truck, and I do want to highlight something here as well. Um, I don't know about you guys, but um, I have to travel, whether it's 10 minutes or 30 to 40 minutes, to all of my hunting locations. Um, I don't live anywhere I hunt. So... Uh, I don't like picking up uh, as any unnecessary odors in my vehicle that could bust me. So I do two things to combat that. The first thing I do is I have an ozone generator for my truck. So I accidentally lied to the bag. I'd have two uses for ozone. And basically what you do is you plug this in your cigarette lighter slash cell phone charger port in your car. Um, and you let that run for, it'll run, it'll run as long as you want. This just happens to be set lock, Oz by set lock, but... There are other companies that make these that probably work just as well. Um, but this one's been good. It hasn't, hasn't run down on me. I've had it for two years. And you basically just you leave this in your truck unoccupied you know, before your hunt. Even if it's only 15, 20 minutes, that'll still help get rid of any odors. If you ate like fast food or if you had your dog in here or whatever it is, it'll, it'll kill all that bacteria um, and leave less to transmit for the woods. So... Uh, that's a big thing there, and that'll one of these will be a huge help to your car, especially if you have to travel to where you hunt. The second thing I do to combat um, odors in my vehicle is I never wear my hunting clothes um, until I'm ready to go in the woods. So the biggest thing I do is I have some some just whatever clothes, like between blue jeans and t-shirts and quarter zips, whatever that I call quote unquote truck clothes. Basically what those are, are clothes I throw on at home. They're washed and scent free detergent, but they're not completely scent free because, you know, I'm wearing them at home, wearing them in the, in the truck, but they're not, you know, they're not, um, they're not, they don't have those fragrances on there. So they're still not, I'm not still not picking anything up, but I'm basically what it's doing is it's saving my hunting clothes from picking up home and vehicle odors. Um, so I'll wear those into the truck, um, change into them at home, wear them into the truck. Once I get to my hunting spot, I'll change out of those clothes and go into my set lock and then uh, head of the woods. But um, that's a big factor in uh, minimizing the odors you're taking into the woods. And like I said, those clothes, I'll, you know, wash and scent free detergent. And uh, if I uh, have clothes that I'm not going to wash for a little bit, I'll run them through the uh, 8K bag um, with the ozone and kill whatever odors I picked up and uh, wear them again. Because I'm only wearing them for no more than an hour max, so I can wear them a couple days. You know, because, like I said, it's normally just pants and a shirt. So, 
yeah, those between truck clothes and ozone, those are the two things I do to stay uh, set free within my vehicle uh, going from uh, home to hunting location. For years, my go-to field spray had been um, sent away max, um, unscented. That's a very good one. But for me, I now use oz uh, the ozone infused by Scentlock. OZ. Um, right now, as you can see by hitting that button, ozone's being infused in the water. You can use any water. You can use tap water, bottled water, spring water. There's a little USB port here in the back to recharge the um, little ozone generator here. This kills 99.9% .9 of not only bacteria, but odors. For me, I sprayed on my, my um, uh, bow rope, bow release, my bow, um, and my safety harness. Um, the Anything that I take in the field that is not scent lock. And one nice thing about this spray is unlike um, all of the sprays, not just um, set away, you get that little, those little small white um, bubbles to dry on your um, equipment, which kind of doesn't look good and is it the nicest thing. So um, this doesn't leave that. I've been very impressed with it. It's a great product. You buy one and you're good for life. Just re, um, keep recharging and refilling with water. Um, the infused by Scentlock, that's us by Scentlock. That is my go-to field spray. Um, very good stuff. I also spray my boots as well. I forgot to mention that, but yeah. If you don't wear Scentlock, it's a very smart thing to spray down with completely with this and you'll kill as, as much odor as you can here. So as I had mentioned, I, uh, I keep my, uh, non-Scentlock clothing in truck clothing, undergarments, all that stuff and airtight totes to avoid contamination. See, I even have multiple towels here, um, socks, and then I have wherever they're at, oh gosh, um, underwear that are all washed in scent-free detergent. Um, I leave my underwear and socks on after uh, uh, even through driving in the truck because my boots will cover any sock odor I pick up and my underwear is underneath my set lock, so I'm not too worried about that. Plus, they're already washed in scent-free detergent, so I do have, like I said, I do have this container for those clothes as well, so, um, I, and the towel thing is really underrated because what good is a scent-free shower if you just, uh, dry off with a towel wa uh, with those wash and tie to get all that odor over you. You know, that does you no good. It basically undoes your shower, not for being clean, but for being set free. So always do that. And like I said, if I'm going to use the towel again before washing it, after it's dry, run it through the uh, 8K bag. So yeah, airtight storage for things that are even um, not set lock. Okay, guys, so this is where the ozone aspect of my scent control comes in. This is the limited use I use for it, but this is a big thing. This is my Scentlock 8K, 8K bag with the Oz 500 machine, which is right in there. As you can see, it's off right now. Um, basically, all I do with this is I set it on 30-minute cycle, hit it, zipper it up, and let it run, and uh, it, it makes anything I want set free. <clears throat> now, basically what I do is, with my scent lock clothing, uh, after I'm done hunting, I'll throw it in, get rid of as many as possible, many uh, odors as possible once I'm done with, once I've used it for the 20 to 40 hours in, in the field. And uh, then from there, I'll reactivate it in the dryer to get that double action of not only getting rid of the odors, but also uh, making the carbon pores as available as possible for the next hunt. I also use this on, I don't, on my uh, scent lock, uh, or non-scent lock, excuse me, base layers and other accessories. So this stuff like my safety harness, um, base layers, uh, I wash my socks and underwear, so that's that's not one of the things, but any uh, hats I wear in the field um, that aren't scent lock, whether it's an orange hat or whatever, a vest, bow release, anything like that. Um, that I really can't feasibly wash. I'll run through in here, um, and then I'll respray down with my uh, infuse in the field. Um, but overall, this is a really great tool. You know, especially if you have a really bad hunt where you sweat up, you could let your clothes dry, and then throw them in here, and then they'll be scent free if you don't have time to wash them. So just a really great tool here. I personally do not use ozone in the field for a couple reasons. One, I don't really want to be breathing that stuff in personally, and two. Um, 
I'm trying to be scent free, so ozone does have a little bit of an odor. Um, and then the Stoke mirror on that's better than I'd rather have a deer smell an odor of ozone than human body odor. But nonetheless, I mean, if you're hunting in a high pressure area, you know, even an odor of ozone could tip them off. So that's why I don't really use in the field. This is my only personally my only use of ozone, but it's a really valuable bag. You can hold a lot of gear in here. There's videos of guys fitting three, four, five, six set lock suits in there, whatever your clothing preference might be if it's different. But just a really nice value bag, both not only for uh, the set control, but also for uh, just transporting your gear. So this is the uh, set lock 8K bag with the uh, OS 500 inside. All right, guys, so we've made it down to the wonderful room known as my basement. Uh, I want to talk about stuff for the dryer and the washer. So I have a few products here and want to explain, you know, basically my process for this whole thing for clothes between set lock, which is activated carbon and undergarments like base layers, socks, underwear that uh, are not. So for the stuff that's not, so I've used both of these, not just these brands, uh, both more hunting brands and more uh, sensitive skin, free and clear, odor free, whatever. And only reason I ever buy these is if there's like a clothes out sale or something I see, I'll buy them just because. But nine times out of ten, I buy these because you'll get around these around five or six bucks a gallon or for a whole gallon compared to, you know, 10, 11 bucks for something like this. It's not even as much. And this will last you a lot longer. It's pretty, and it's pretty much the same darn thing. Um, so any, 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 um, detergent you can get that's, um, Scent free, free and clear you can get um, over just just kind of the hunting brands because it's, it's literally the same thing. Now I do have some set lock soap I use when I do get set lock stuff dirty, which is rare. I try not to wash that because the more you wash, the more it breaks down the carbon. But for regular clothing, yeah, anything like this will do. All makes brand and also the scent free dryer sheets. This is your normal stuff, your normal Tide bounce, whatever brand you use for regular clothing. Um, my wife, thankfully, is willing enough to uh, give up this stuff from September until the end of deer season just to get that those extra odors out of these as much as possible. I appreciate that from her, but I do kind of insist on it. Um, but if your wife isn't willing to do that or whatever, or you aren't willing to do that, basically, as long as you run a load of wash, like normal wash with, with this before you wash your hunting clothes, that's going to get a lot of it out. I mean, don't get me wrong, a month before without this stuff is going to be better, but that's better than just throwing it right in. Um, like, if I'm wearing scouting clothes, which is just normal hunting clothes, and I, which I always wash in this, um, I'll run a load before this, that with these in it as well throughout the year, and that works out well. Um, that, helps, that helps get that odor out. Um, so, yeah, again, you don't need to go crazy with hunting brands for these. I just recommend, you know, you know, you do the same thing. It's literally the same thing. It's just a lot of marketing. So, so yeah, that's the deal for regular clothes. Just wash it in this and keep it in an airtight tote separate of your scent lock because you don't want your scent lock absorbing small odors from that. I just always keep scent lock separate from that stuff. But also, airtight tote will help keep um, outside uh, uh, odors out. Like, for example, this here is a scent lock airtight tote. They make other ones that are um, like, I get one on Tractor Supply for 20 bucks. And I have two or three of them. I keep the normal hunting clothes in. So I use, and that's all I use anymore. I don't use the plastic ones because they're not airtight. And I, I don't want, I want as few odors as possible going to the woods. So that's the rundown on washing and storing regular hunting clothing. Um, and I won't wear regular hunting clothing twice, um, like baselers or something, unless I either wash it or run it through my um, 8K bag, um, just just because, just to keep eliminating that odor. So that's the deal with that. Now, as I had mentioned, um, unless super dirty, I always only run my set lock stuff through the dryer after I run the 8K bag um, to remove as many odors as possible. Um, this stuff here is new stuff I bought this year, just. So this just happens to be the new uh, Realtree Escape pattern. Uh, I'm not promoting any 
pattern or whatever. I'm just simply saying I'm regenerating this in the dryer because this is new stuff. So this is a good example for today. And my last two loads were with sensitive stuff, the uh, scent free detergent. So there's not that residue of bounce or tide in there. And just a nick cap there. Um, and then let me get out my new fortress suit, which is a really good cold weather suit. Um, really good cold weather suit. Um, super warm. I have mid late season and early season stuff, but I'm not really going to highlight all that right now. Um, I'm just kind of showing you the process for the regeneration. Um, and then you typically also, when I take stuff out of the dryer, which I'll show you once we get to that point, I, uh, I always run, just rub my hands with a scent free, uh, set free wipe just just to get as much humidity off as possible because whatever I leave that'll absorb within the tote so throw that in you need a 45 minute cycle on the highest heat setting it's right about there hit the on button and you let that run for 45 minutes once that comes back on I'll show you yeah how I just restore it and uh, go on but yeah that's that's how you reactivate all your set lock so um, and then I'll just say with this, with Scentlock, you know, this, this is the best, uh, by far the best scent control related clothing ever worn. Blocker is good too. It's better than everything else, but Scentlock's a step up from Blocker in my opinion. Again, I like Blocker. I wore it all turkey season and wear it for seven. It's good, well-made stuff. But I, I, Scentlock is more absorptive and is, in my opinion, the best. Um, ever since I've been using it since 2017, I haven't been winded once. And I hunt in areas where the wind changes 24 seven. So it's really, really hard to hunt the wind. And that's why I wear it. You know, I'll hunt the wind and then 50, 60% of the time it changes anyway. So I, I, I'm gonna end up with deer downwind of me a lot because of the hills I hunt. So the biggest things with scent lock are in addition to the coat and pants, you need rubber boots, gloves, and a head cover. 40% of your body odor comes off your head. So I always wear a drop, either uh, just a normal head cover or a brim head cover with a drop down face mask to cover my breath and head hair as much as possible, um, that odor. So if you have all that and you're treating your clothes properly and you're washing properly, you're gonna be as scent free as you can be heading into the field. So check back here once uh, my uh, new stuff is uh, reactivated. Dryer's done. Use a scent free wipe here on my hand just to get that scent free as possible. And now I can uh, take out my gear. Fortress jacket here. Very, very warm as I mentioned. Go with the bibs here. This goes back into airtight storage and will not come out of airtight storage until one of these cold November days where I really need it. Unless we have something super cold in October. Stay airtight till then. I'll organize everything here quick. Sorry about the uh, just the audio here. Just had my hands full. And then obviously head cover, beanie, another form of head cover, gloves, and another face mask. As I said, guys, you know, um, a set lock. Um, you don't just need the suit and pants, you also need that head cover and gloves because anywhere you have exposed skin, odor is coming out into the field for you. So, yeah, this stuff's all sealed up, airtight, ready to go for season. And uh, that's the process, man. Just uh, throw it on the dryer, 45 minutes, reactivate it, and it's ready to go. So just real quick here on how Scentlock works. Scentlock is made of activated carbon, which is the most absorptive, one of the one of the very most absorptive um, compounds on Earth. Um, been used for NASA on their spacesuits, many other uses, paint respirators, hospitals, stuff like that. Um, basically, when odor comes off your body, um, the those uh, uh, carbon mo molecules and par particles bond to that odor and lock it in rather than letting it seep through your clothing. Um, scent lock's typically good for 20 to 40 hours of field use. I tend to go on the 20 to 30 side just to be safe after, pretty much after two two to four hunts, depending on how long they are, just, just to be safe. 
on the low end and it's 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 worked really well for me so um, as long as you're just reactivating it and not washing it every single time and uh, breaking down that uh, glue that holds the carbon you're good to go you can wash your clothes about once a season max I don't even always I only do it if I get really muddy but uh yeah definitely been a game changer for me and uh it's it's been by far the best set control related clothing I've ever worn. I've tried a multiple ones, so it's really good stuff. If you have, if you have any questions, shoot me a message on Dual Throw Outdoors or uh, Eric Bars on my Facebook page. I'd love to answer any questions for you. But that's just the general rundown on set lock and how it works. So I want to take a minute here to go over um, this other aspect of set control: rubber boots. My personal preference is the cross boots for two of my three. I really like the comfort of them and the durability. I wear. Um, Uninsulated and thousand gram thin slit boots, and then I also have Bath and Titan, which are a pack boot, which are super warm for uh, cold weather conditions. Those are just my preferences. I mean, there's other brands out there that are well good as well. If I'm crossing a creek, I'll tuck my set lock pants, and otherwise, I usually leave them draped over, just because every time you take a step, a puff of air comes out, and that carbon in the pants will absorb that odor. Um, I, I would assume a lot of it does get absorbed if they're tucked in, anyways. But either way, they're a huge advantage over regular lace-up leather boots um, because those let air out and that can lead a scent trail right to your trail and spook deer. So blow up that whole area. So rubber boots are another very important aspect to being scent free. Um, the only time I even wear lace-up boots is if I'm doing drives where scent doesn't matter um, or late season scouting after season where it doesn't matter. Anytime preseason, I'm still in there with rubber boots. So it's another key aspect there. So I hope all the uh, friends of Bunchy enjoyed this video uh, on scent control and being scent free. Um, I know it's not for everyone and there's a lot of people who hate scent control, hate the work that goes into it, but for me, it's really worth it for the um, swirling winds I face every hunting season in hill country here. Um, and again, for crossbow compound recurve, you want to be, you have, want that close range game, so it's really key. And the last thing I'll point out is I, I do, I will admit, I don't think this all this stuff doing gets you 100% scent free, but I do think you can get to that 99, 99, 5 um, percent range. And also, if a deer's smelling only 0.5 or even 1% of you, they're going to think you're 200, 300, 400 yards away, maybe even farther rather than 20 yards. So that's how I look at it, and, and, and it's really helped my success the last few years. So thanks for watching this, and, uh, you know, Thanks to Rich for letting me show you guys this, and uh, all hail Bungie and Bungie Jr.